everybody. Happy Monday. How you doing out there? Hope you're having a great day. This is The Closing Beats, a quick show that we do. Uh, stock market update here. We're financial advisors here at Jazz Wealth. Hope you'll keep us in mind and check us out at jazzwealth.com. Uh, we manage our own portfolios here. That's kind of my background, uh, so we do that. Other advisors buy mutual funds and things, and they have no real control over your investments. We like to change that up a little bit, so our expense-free uh, mutual, or I can't say mutual funds, our expense-free funds can be found on our website, and hope you'll check it out. Uh, we're also playing a game. It's called Guess the Dow. We're going to play it this week, even though it's a holiday-shortened week. You've got uh, jazzwealth.com forward slash guess the Dow. If you want to play along, uh, you can just take a guess. Tell me where you think the Dow is going to close, and we will, uh, of course, notify you uh, when uh, we have a winner. Last week, our winner was Catherine. She's one of our customers here, so we're crediting her account $100. If you're one of our customers, we can credit your account $100, uh, even if you've made your max contributions or anything for the year. Uh, usually, we do classes. Uh, every Thursday, we do classes for customers, and this week will be an exception. It's Thanksgiving this week, so we will have no class, no wine and wealth class, but all of our previous uh, classes are, of course, available in the dojo for all of our customers. So you got a little bit of a holiday binge watching once you stuff your face with uh, turkey there this weekend. Hope everybody has a great Thanksgiving. I'll get a chance to tell you that because we're going to do the show tomorrow and we're going to do the show on Wednesday, but not Thursday and Friday. So uh, just keep that in mind. Well, you got the stock market a little higher today, actually hitting new record highs. The Dow added 190. You got 23 on the S&P and 112 on the Nasdaq. The Russell, that's what we really want to talk about. That's exciting. But anyways, let's talk about the S&P here first. Here you go, uh, just trending along ever so nicely. <clears throat> lower volume, lower volatility especially. Uh, a lot of it today stemmed from uh, some progress on the phase one of the trade deal. You know, the markets are just moving based on the trade deal here these days. And um, China said that they would increase the penalties for their uh, intellectual property theft uh, over there. So that's a good sign because that's something that we've been trying to fight for over there. Uh, Reuters did say that there was no chance of a phase two deal before the election. And with the pace of everything and how it's going, you can kind of understand why. Uh, but the market didn't seem to care, so we just sort of started off strong and then stayed strong. It was one of those days where if I can go over to like a five-minute chart, here's the start of the day here. Markets opened up 9.30, 9.35, so on and so on. We get into the mid-morning, and all of a sudden, we just got real quiet, real like a snoozer kind of a market there, uh, and we finished up near highs. Uh, I think without any sort of outlying news or things uh, from earnings that maybe are shocking, you'd expect to kind of see just a quiet sort of wrap up to the week, given that it is a holiday shortened week there. Uh, there's an old saying, you never short a dull market, and that would be a great example today. Uh, you just don't want to be caught short in something like that. I mentioned the Russell here just a minute ago because that had a great day today. Um, if you have any small cap funds in your 401k or you've been sort of investing in that, you've noticed a lot of chop back and forth, and here's a great chart to illustrate that. We started off the year with the recovery, just like every other uh, index did. Uh, but then basically the Russell went sideways. We pointed this out numerous times. Well, today it hit a 52-week high, finally getting going. So if you have like um, large cap funds or target date funds and things inside of those, uh, if you have any small cap exposure there, that has been dragging a little bit. Not that the performance this year has been bad, but that's been holding it back a little bit. Today, we finally saw a really good boost there from the Russell. Great, great day for the Russell. So happy to see that. Um, also going to help our small cap fund as well. We have an individual small cap fund, so looking good there. As far as the S&P 500 goes, uh, this is now 32 days where we have not seen a range of more than 1%, meaning from high to low every single day. Uh, the market has been stuck uh, less than 1%, so small moves here. I went back and looked there just for you because I couldn't remember the other day. 64 straight days is the record. You got to go back to 2017 to find the last time the stock market, um, well, to find the record. 64 days that the market's gone the S&P in particular, without trading outside of 1% range. We covered the volatility expectations going forward and everything in our class for customers, uh, not last week, but the week before. It's in the dojo in our portfolio update. areas of the market continue to be tech. Uh, so if we look at tech there, up over 42% now on the year, right? Yeah, tech's one of the better performing areas. Energy is the weakest spot 
Gains only around 7% so far this year. However, it's the highest yielding sector of the market as well. 3.97% yield on this uh, individual sector. So it makes it a little attractive, right? You could see people starting to make those decisions. Some of the stocks in there that have done well recently is Halliburton coming off lows. Doesn't look like it's done well, but it's coming off lows a little bit. Uh, ConocoPhillips, one of the better performers inside of that space that's done well. Uh, so there you go. Um, energy, by the way yielding more than real estate and utilities. So if you use something like REITs, uh, they're yielding, where are they at? 3.16% uh, and utilities yielding 3.15%. So kind of interesting there. Uh, trying to, they're trying to pull you over to that sector there. So we'll see what happens. Uh, weaker areas on the day, we're going to be anything uh, safe haven related, uh, gold, gold miners, silver, things like that. The gold mining index was down 2% uh, on the day today. To be fair, a lot of that was because of uh, Kirkland Lake. KL is the ticker symbol. Uh, big down day for them, down 17%. They make up uh, just over 5% of the GDX, so a natural weight on that one here today. But looking around, you got silver also a little bit lower by three quarters of a percent. I just pulled it up a second ago. Utilities rounding off here, pulling down a little bit, uh, and gold down about a half a percent on the day. Semiconductors were one of the stronger areas on the day, 2.3%, uh, very trade sensitive, right? So anytime there's good news about trade, then that's going to help the semiconductors as well. Uh, retail continues that strong bounce off the 200-day moving average, so a good sign there for those of you who participating in the retail sector. We pointed that out last week as well. Uh, tech, we talked about this, up 1.5% already. Uh, just a tiny little pullback there, and now it's on its way back higher again. Healthcare continues its run really strong, up over 1% today, hitting new highs again. So healthcare gaining that momentum. You know what this is, by the way. If you're just curious what's going on here. Uh, so Naturally, Elizabeth Warren dropping down in the polls a little bit. Um, Michael Bloomberg announcing he's going to run for president. So that's going to detract a little bit attention. Also a little bit of the campaign funding dollars as well. And uh, But a lot of this has to do with people taking money out of weaker areas and putting them into stronger areas so that they can show better performance going into the end of the year. So you got to go with where the performance is, and the performance has been in healthcare. Uh, and we don't need to talk about utilities again, uh, but that was the one sector today that was lower. So every other sector of the market was higher, utilities down by about a third of a percent. So that's what you have there. Individual stocks, see a lot of news in the M&A space today. TD Ameritrade officially being bought out by Schwab. So uh, up seven and a half percent on the day. And interestingly, Schwab was higher as well. That's a good sign. Usually the acquiring company uh, shares end up lower, and that's because there's going to be some people that disagree with the acquisition. When you see a stock that's higher and they are the acquiring company, that lets you know that the shareholders as a whole agree with that uh, acquisition and, uh, more importantly, agree with the price as well. Uh, it's a $26 billion deal. That gives them over $5 trillion in assets. We covered that before. Uh, the way it breaks down, if you happen to own TD Ameritrade in a portfolio or a mutual fund or something like that, you are basically going to get one point. 08 shares of Schwab for every one share of TD Ameritrade that you own. That equals out to, um, if you're curious, what you're going to get paid for those shares or what it roughly balances out to be. It's $52.23 a share, so a little bit higher than where it's currently at uh, at the moment. And that deal looks like it's going to be a done deal. It's getting done. So uh, expect to see that transition starting soon. Other M&A news, you got Tiffany officially being bought out by uh, Louis Vuitton, Hennessy, I forget the name, Moet Hennessy or something. LVMH is the ticker symbol. Uh, so the stock was hired by 6% on the day. They are buying Tiffany for $135 a share. That deal is expected to close in the middle of next year, 2020. Can't believe I'm saying 2020, but that's what you have there. Netflix was higher today by 1.6% despite a downgrade from Wells Fargo. So Wells Fargo downgraded the stock today. They had some comments on how competition is going to be a little bit more than they expected. Uh, cash flow is a concern. I'm sorry, free cash flow was being overstated by uh, other analysts there. So they came in at the other side of that. They've got a 265 price target, which puts it all the way back down here towards where that 10% drop was before. We can get rid of that. There you go. So hit their price target is 265. This analyst, by the way, is 55% accurate, has about a uh, three percent positive gain on all of his picks over the last 12 months. Uh, the most uh, successful analyst that covers this stock's name is Mike Olson. He's at Piper Jeffrey. Uh, he thinks that the price target should be 400 new highs for Netflix. So the guy that does the best on his picks here, he's 64 percent accurate, 19 percent average gain. He says $400 price target on Netflix. So shares were a little bit higher today. 
Uh, Dick's Sporting Goods was upgraded by Bank of America today. It was basically flat. It started the day higher, came all the way back down to even. Why is that? Because they report earnings tomorrow. And so a rare before earnings upgrade uh, from Bank of America. They've got a $55 price target on this. They basically went all in on the uh, same store sales growth outlook. So when it comes to Dick's Sporting Goods reporting earnings tomorrow, they're essentially saying same store sales growth is expected to be better than what it actually comes out to be, uh, in, or better than what they're expecting it to be, uh, more optimistic than what comes out. And uh, so that you don't see that often, right? So um, Dick's basically just a, it wasn't really that much higher today, but we'll see. Earnings comes out tomorrow before the market's open. We're expecting 38 cents a share in earnings. So we'll see how they do. We'll cover that one uh, tomorrow. Apple also getting closer to new highs, up 1.75% today. Uh, there was a report by a tech blog, magazine-ish kind of thing that said they are telling their suppliers to expect higher shipments for the 5G phones that they're working on. Uh, and so that's positive news there. One of the tech stocks that helps support the markets overall today. 68.7% of the S&P 500 is above its 50-day moving average. That's getting back towards the higher end of the range. You had 37 new 52-week highs today. That number is also getting back to normal. It was lower on Friday. 30, we've been seeing numbers in the 20s and 30s lately, so looking good there. Of that, a um, little less than half. You got 14 stocks were financials today. Financials continuing their run. JP Morgan hitting new 52 week highs. Uh, Ameriprise, yep, that's another one breaking out of a little bit of a range there. T Rowe Price uh, also in there as well. And I believe. Morgan Stanley, yep, 1.5% uh, higher on the day. So financials in there. You're going to imagine healthcare stocks are in the mix as well. Humana was one of those in the group. Wellcare group, I bet you, yep, same one. Uh, Wellcare up to new highs as well. And uh, Vertex was on Friday, was hit 52-week highs, and today it did the same, up 2.5% on the day. The only new 52-week low in the S&P 500 today was Alta. Uh, in uh, for Ulta, Barron's had an article over the weekend that said, look, this thing sold off 35% from highs. They said despite that, there's still likely some more downside risk. Uh, the stock did start lower on the day, but being a little bit extended, saw some buyers there, up 1% on the day. And that was your only 52-week low on the day. Um, what else do we have? Amazon's uh, officially filed their lawsuit against the Department of Justice, uh, Department of Defense for that $10 billion contract. They claimed that uh, oh, it was a political. Old President Trump maybe nudged it the other way because he doesn't like Jeff Bezos. He doesn't like uh, uh, Amazon. Uh, Disney a little bit higher on the day. Frozen 2 came out and lots of different numbers being thrown around. 172 million in the U.S. and Canada, over 300 million worldwide for a movie. Yikes. It's a good thing because they're building a new Frozen ride uh, over at Epcot. So it's a good thing they, uh, uh, that that's taken off and doing real well there. Um, we'll see. Uh, Uber in the news as well. Uh, down a little bit on the day. They lost their license to do business in London, at least for now. That's the second time that's happened. So we'll, we'll see what happens there. And let me point out Bitcoin. So Bitcoin really giving you this waterfall kind of a drop today. It did reverse a little bit, but lower on the day if you're looking at Bitcoin futures. Uh, so now down nine days, uh, nine days in a row, nine lower closes than the previous day before. Um, we look back on this as far back as we can go is 2011 for Bitcoin. Um, and November is typically the most volatile month for Bitcoin. And so that's continuing here. I don't follow Bitcoin much, but just thought it'd be fun to check out a little bit there. Um, in other news, Mexico. This one's rather interesting here. We don't follow Mexico often, but we're always watching. Um, Mexico's recession officially ended. How many of you knew uh, Mexico was actually in an official recession? Their GDP numbers came out today, went back into positive territory after being that way for three straight quarters. Um, what's interesting, and I want to point out, their recession started December of last year. And I'm going to just zoom out here real quick. We got time today, right? I didn't notice something. First, let me zoom out. This is a weekly chart of uh, EWW. It's a way to play Mexican uh, markets there. Not everything, but it's a way to play the Mexican markets. Um, anyways, the recession officially started in December uh, from a technical perspective, two lower quarters of negative GDP. And so what happened here is, look at this. When was the bottom officially in Mexico? The bottom happened when the recession started. 
So there's a really, really interesting correlation between markets' performance and recessions. We've covered them all for customers and everything, but I just thought that was kind of fascinating. If you found that Mexico was in a recession and you're in Mexico and you go, oh my gosh, that's the end of it, you're actually in the hole. You would have been better off holding. Markets respond before uh, economic numbers do. Economic numbers are, are sort of um, lagging indicators. They're backward looking. Anyways, Mexico officially out of their recession there. Um, and so it was higher a little bit to start the day, but basically kind of flat, uh, low vol volume as well. But good news for them uh, if you happen to follow along what's going on there. I'll point out NVIDIA, that's on 52-week highs as well. That reversal from the other day, we talked about that. Anytime you have a big solid down day immediately erased by a big solid green day, you want to watch a stock like that. Those things don't, that doesn't happen often. And when it does, that indicates a reversal. Uh, so NVIDIA, great today, about 5% higher on the day. It also helps that Morgan Stanley upgraded them today and has a $259 price target, which is off the charts. That put it way up here. Uh, so there you go. That's uh, NVIDIA. Tomorrow, you've got earnings from Analog Devices, Abercrombie & Fitch, Best Buy, Dick Sporting Goods, Dollar Tree, Hormel, Tech Data reporting as well, uh, Autodesk, Dell, uh, Guess, the, the company, Guess, uh, GameStop, and Hewlett Packard, which will be interesting. That'll probably be one of the more volatile names because of the Xerox uh, bid there going on. So maybe get some more clarity on that. Out of the names reporting earnings tomorrow, VMW has the best track record of beating uh, on earnings and revenue. Uh, they beat 96% of the time on earnings, 92% of the time on revenue. And then in the retail space, because there's a lot of retail names uh, reporting, Burlington, uh, like they it's called Burlington stores, but we know them as Burlington coat factories there. Uh, they have the best beat rate at 88% on earnings. And the other one I mentioned a second ago, it's not retail, but uh, Autodesk, it was a little higher today. They beat 86% uh, of the time on earnings. So we'll see. Uh, maybe a couple uh, interesting talking points as we go into the end of the week. Uh, dividends coming out. Uh, you got Maxim paying out 48 cents and the CBOE paying out 36 cents. We happen to own one of those in our portfolios here at Jazz. I'll let you guess which one it is. If you happen to have questions, uh, I'll do my best. I'll try to answer some of your questions here and then we'll wrap it up. It is a holiday shortened week. Keep in mind the markets are closed on Thursday. I believe it's a half a day on Friday. We're not going to do the show on Thursday or Friday, of course. So uh, let's see what we can do here for you. You guys like the pot stocks there? I saw that. Starting to position on Aurora Cannabis, trying to bet on a bottom there. I'll keep the same comments there. I don't think pot stocks are the... I don't think you have to try to guess the bottom. I think you can afford to see the bottom first and just hop on that train somewhere along the way. I wouldn't be so quick to try to guess um, that, it, that things are uh, going to just bounce and take off. I wouldn't want to make that bet anyways. Um... Cool. Uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> YouTube ads are getting longer and more annoying. Yeah, I don't have a way. I mean, I don't have a way to say, hey, don't show this. And, and you know what's funny is the ads that they show you, they're based on your browsing history. Because a lot of people will email me and say, hey, why did I get an ad for some face cream or something? And I'm like, well, maybe, maybe your wife is searching for something to keep, keep herself, you know, with the face cream. I don't know what you want me to tell you. So it's, uh, we don't get to choose. I have no idea. So it's based on your browsing history because uh, I get a ton of tech ones. I get data ones all the time. And I'm like, ooh, what's that? And I constantly am looking at stuff. But uh, that's it. Elon Musk did report over 200,000 orders for the Cybertruck coming out. We'll see. Yeah, keep in mind, this is a, sort of a pattern of theirs. They report a lot of orders. Then the, when we get down to it, we'll see how many deliveries they make. Uh, I have a feeling we're going to be talking about that truck for a while. Yeah. You think there's going to be a Santa Claus rally in its traditional sense? Uh, I mean, there would seem every reason to believe that that could still be the case. Um, a lot of people want to sort of bend the rules a little and say, well, it started early. Yeah. Uh, cool. Yeah. <laughs> you like 6,000 on the S&P? Well, you're, that's, that's bullish. <laughs> okay. Uh, good. I just hope so. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, um, 
B, uh, Best Buy, BBY, the question is, can it pull back ELEC, the price, ELEC it down at 62? Can it do that by February? Um, well, earnings are tomorrow, so that's going to sort of set the tone for what to expect going forward. Earnings tomorrow are expected to be $1.03 a share, revenue of $9.716 billion. Uh, so we'll see. There's going to be a lot of holiday comments in there. I think you wouldn't want to make that bet right now. And it's a good thing you can't, right? Markets are essentially closed. I mean, technically you can, but... Markets are basically closed. So we'll see. It's a tough one to say because you get a real feeling of the tone tomorrow. Yep. Oh, yeah. Um, you want to see the bottom of the market was the beginning of the recession in Mexico. Oh, it was EWW is the sector, uh, the uh, country ETF, if you want to follow along on that thing. You can. You sure can. Uh, any thoughts on AKBA? An incredible sort of rally uh, in the short term here. Just a quick reversal there. Um, I don't see any immediate news here. Don't follow these as much. It's not my area of expertise there. I see some higher price targets uh, from some analysts there. $16, $17 a share. That's pretty impressive. A uh, couple lower price targets, but from 12 to 10 18 to 15 Oh. Yeah, 18 to 15. So there's some, I mean, those are still high price targets there. So uh, I, don't, I don't really have any comment on it, though. Um, <laughs> uh, can you discuss issues related to investing in energy MLPs in particular? What do you mean? You, I mean, you're free to invest in those. Uh, you might want to consider the type of account that you invest in on those. We have a handful of them here in our portfolios. It, it gets a little bit sort of, of a frustration with all the K-1s and stuff you get. But um, at the end of the day, I mean, would you be upset if you had a nice profit? I mean, at the end of the day, I'd be all right with that. Um, that's interesting. Some of the comments that YouTube's deciding to block here because you said cannabis. Very interesting. I don't. I can't like make it on. It says it's it's a comment that's held for me to review because you said cannabis. Interesting. Oh, and somebody said racist. I don't. You weren't calling me a racist. I like that. So that's cool. <laughs> uh, okay, moving on. Uh, yeah, McDonald's, Pepsi. You like the idea of those? Cool. You like buying a little bit of discount there? I would say obviously McDonald's is more on sale uh, than anything else. Um, you like the idea of silver? Yeah, there's always going to be people out there. I, I mean, like at the end of the day, it's your dollars. You can invest how you want. Uh, for me, it's the stats. I want to look at the stats and say, if I put money to work somewhere, take my beliefs out of them for the moment. If I put my money to work somewhere, what am I expecting? And unfortunately, when you look at gold and silver, they're really tough to justify that compared to everything else or other sort of different weightings and allocations you can do. So it's kind of tough there. Yeah, I'm noticing that. YouTube's really kind of censoring more things than I n have seen before. Uh, I don't know. I'm not sure why. Um, you were looking at the data of the last recession to drop a lot more in the percentages. Uh, are you thinking on uh, Mexico? Maybe that's what you're talking about? Yeah. Exxon planning to sell 20. Is it up to 25 billion now? We talked about that the other day. I didn't know it was 25. I thought it was around the single digit area there, but uh, interesting. Any foreign markets more volatile that may serve as a better entry point, uh, given that the stock market is hitting new highs? There are tons of different ways to play both individual uh, markets around the world, and absolutely, uh, China, Japan, they're all much more volatile, at least as of now, than we are. Uh, or you can actually play like emerging markets, or they used to call them the pigs, uh, Portugal, Italy, Greece, things like that. Um, so you got to kind of decide how you want to participate when it comes to that. XLF uh, pullback, you like the idea of that one? I mean, right now, I think the word is out that that is sort of the most undervalued area of the market. You need financials to move the markets higher. And for now, you have uh, hopefully a stabilization of rates that people can wrap their heads around and start moving forward with instead of the Fed saying, we're going to cut, we're going to cut, we're going to cut. Uh, so for now, it's a tough one to assume the financials just reverse course and pull back without some sort of, uh, you know, headline news craziness there, something like that. No. Yep. And finally, what do you think of CDW? Returns look great. Yeah, it's had a great year so far. Very steady uptrend in terms of uh, the charts there all year long. Very, very steady uptrend. 
Um, so nothing there that would say I have to sell or, you know, I should be concerned or anything like that. So it, you're right. It does look good. Yep. Can you recommend what sites have ratings or review ratings or reviews of stocks or ETFs? I'm not sure what you mean by that. Stock uh, rating. You mean like analyst ratings? You can look up analyst ratings probably on any, like a Yahoo or something. You could see different where they're at on that. Um, I'm not sure what you mean by ratings of stocks, though, unless you're talking about analysts. Can you do a video on the different healthcare plans that can help your dough? If you mean like HSAs and stuff, yeah. If you mean like actual policies, oh my goodness, you don't want to get me started on that one. Unbelievable what we pay for health insurance out there. Just unbelievable. I, you know, people protest a bunch of interesting things. What if we all protested one day and just said, we're just not going to pay our medical bills? Like, I'm not saying do that, of course. I'm just saying like, I mean, you know, same with student loans. What if people just all of a sudden said, we're not going to pay them? And, and the kids, the, you know, the protest, they get so upset these days, they go, I'm just not going to pay for it. What is that? It's a tough one. And why don't we talk about that in politics? Like, why aren't student loans uh, deductible? That seems easy. Just change it. Anyways. <laughs> um, cool. <laughs> I like it. Use the icons instead. All right, I'm going to wrap it up there. Uh, so expect tomorrow to be sort of quiet and volatile. Maybe some stocks with earnings that come out, maybe a little more active there. But we'll cover it. We'll be back here to do this all over again. I hope you enjoyed the rest of your day. And, uh, yeah, if you're not coming back, enjoy the rest of your week and Thanksgiving. And uh, we will talk to you guys later. Thanks for watching. Hey, wait, before you go watch one of our other great videos, have you had a chance to see our new FinTips videos? They focus on one topic at a time, covering investing, personal finance, and anything that can quickly help you with your dough. Best of all, we'll keep it real short, because we know time is money. Why should you choose Jazzwealth as your retirement or long-term investing service? Our portfolios are managed by us, not some faceless mutual fund manager. Our private classes will teach you everything about investing and getting your dough straight. Best of all, our fiduciary standard means your best interest comes before ours.